All right, ladies, you can learn from my mistakes. I made a lot after my divorce. I was very giving. I was in a space of being very loving, very giving, very trusting. I had never met guys who blew me off, at least not in a long time. I've never dated a narcissist or an alcoholic or an abuser. Pretty sheltered, pretty trusting, pretty ignorant. And I had sex with men without a condom if I liked them or they were special, only to be completely blown off. This was years ago. <laughs> Late learner, slow learner. So here are my rules for guys. Um, unless we're in a relationship, you're wearing a condom. Um, unless we're friends first, we're not fucking. Unless you are a benefactor. These rules have served me very well, you guys. They're loving and they're kind. And men of value respect these boundaries, actually. Um, having sex with a guy without wearing a condom, a guy you just met or don't know, why? Why are you doing that? He doesn't value that. He's not going to treat you special because you gave him your bare pussy. Um, it's a great gift, actually, to have give a man sex because men need sex more than we do. Sure, we want it, but they want it more. That's why they'll pay for it. That's why they'll pay for it, for porn, for escorts, for cam girls. They need the release more than we do, and they need us more than we need them sexually. And if they don't have it, they get more despondent than we do. So, um, ladies, if you're married, definitely have sex with your man on the regular. Definitely. Very important for a relationship. But if you're not married, it's a great gift to give to a man. So at least put a condom on it. Um, there is no reason to ever have sex with a man without a condom unless you're in a relationship and there were times where I had to keep telling myself when I was in the moment to stick by my rule and boy was I glad that I did I've never regretted when I used a condom I have regretted not using a condom but I've never been like damn girl you should have not used that condom I've never said that so if you're having sex with men without a condom, why? You think they won't like you otherwise? Number two, a lot of people, me included, I love sex. <laughs> but I'm not going to go around just having it with anyone because I don't like it when guys have sex with me and blow me off. So I decided, what would it be like to figure out if I actually like the guy first, what would that be like? Now, here's a challenge. I know we're all hip women. You know, it's a sexual revolution. You know, we can fuck whoever we want, and that's all great. But let's go into some areas where we're all scared to death. You know, the sex part is easy. Anyone can do that. I'm good at that. But what I'm not so good at is making friends with men. Um, what I'm not so good at is going on dates and seeing if I like a guy. What I'm not so good at is sharing my feelings. Um, I mean, not that I'm horrible at it, but I'm trying to make a point here is that there are certain things which are more difficult to do that we avoid in our society. We avoid sharing our feelings. People climb into bed and they don't even know what turns the other person on. They don't even know if they can fuck someone, but they can't say, I miss you when I don't hear from you. I felt lonely today. Or, um, um, these are some things I'm struggling with, or these are some things I'm proud of. Like, people are so quick for the sexual part because that's easier than the emotional and the mental part. That's what I'm trying to get at. And... As a person who wants to keep growing, I'm seeing that's where we have a lot of void in our society. Another void I see is men who just want to be serviced. I hear about gals on Tinder that just drive over to a guy's house and service his dick. Now remember, men are the ones who are the great adventurers who've discovered far off lands, 
who live for months at a time in Arctic weather, who slay wild animals and do scary things like climb into trees and saw off branches, fly planes, drive long distances, do ice fishing. They do a lot of scary, risky things, but they won't drive over to your house to service you. You gotta drive to them and deliver it on a silver platter. Is that the kind of man you wanna fuck? I'm here, I'm just throwing out little nuggets of wake up calls here. A lot of it comes down to um, copying what we saw our parents do and not knowing what we didn't see. So here's my invitation. Start becoming aware of the interactions you saw between your parents or your parent and their lovers, the romantic interactions and what you assimilated as being normal or being just what you learned. And is that what you want? And then you can actually do this in your mind. You can actually practice seeing something different because unless you have experienced it or seen it, you won't even know it's possible. You know, I was talking to um, somebody who said that um, I thought men who yell at me are masculine because my dad yelled at me. My dad yelled at my mom. So I thought men who yell are masculine. I didn't like my boyfriend yelling at me, but that's what masculine men do. So catch yourself in these kind of scenarios or, you know, good women are overlook things. Good women overlook things. My mom overlooked things. My mom overlooked men treating her badly. So good women overlook things. Good women put up with things, you know, so start to really delve into what you saw because that's what we automatically do, what we saw. And, um, one of the really exciting things about that is like, wow, I was doing all the stuff because I was copying what I saw. It's not really what I want. If I want a different result, I have to have different things that I want, different things that I expect. So that's what I'm doing. And when it comes to men, I want to know, do I actually like you? Do I actually want to, are we actually friends? I don't want to just fuck you. I want to know if we're actually friends. And if you just want to fuck me, great. Make an appointment, you know? Um, make an appointment with an escort if that's all you want. Easy. No problem. <laughs> no bad feelings. Um, now, as far as dating, I really think that sex and money are an equal exchange, so... You know, there are a lot of women who go around saying, I'm not going to date a guy unless he's paying. Well, that's like a woman saying, that's like a man saying, I'm not going to go out with a woman unless I can grab her booty, grab her, grab her breasts, kiss her at least. I mean, if it's a $50 date, grab her booty. If it's a $1,000 date, he should be able to fuck you. Otherwise, it's not fair to the guy. Let's be fair. We're women, right? We're not victims. We're equally empowered. And going around saying a guy should spend $500 on a date just to court me. No, you should fuck him then. And if you don't want to fuck him, why are you letting him pay for you? I kind of feel this way now. I'm, I'm at a different point in my life now where I feel like I don't want you to pay for me. Because me accepting your payment of dinner or whatever... It's like me accepting your penis into my body. I'm receiving you, and I'm not quite ready to receive you until I know you. You want to get to know me. You want to date me. I want to get to know you before I accept your body into mine or your money, you know? That's really how I actually feel inside. But, hey, if you just want to, you know, have something in the moment... Well, you guys know I'm a bookkeeper, so I think it's very pure and it's very direct, and that's what feels right for me. But for those of you who are not bookkeepers, and if you want sex and you can't have sex unless you're in a relationship, I don't know what to tell you. I found my own way out of it, but here's just to tell you guys, ladies, if you're not in a relationship, haven't wear a condom. That's my opinion motherly advice and um, before having sex with a guy 
Do you even like him? Can you guys talk about things? Have you shared your feelings? You know, why, why, why is such a rush? Because you're skipping over a lot of stuff. I mean, historically, people had sex with people that they knew for a long time in their neighborhoods, in their tribes, in their communities. Jumping into bed with strangers is a whole new thing. And I'm not opposed to it. I do it all the time. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. But when it comes to um, non-work situations, it's so important, I think, to develop other parts of getting to know someone. And why are we skipping that? Like, why are people jumping into bed and they don't even want to be friends? They don't want to share their interests. They don't want to do activities together. Why don't you want to do activities with someone? Like, is it scary? Is it repulsive? Like, you just want to get off? Like, I don't, I have some questions. Um, anyway, this video was mostly about women valuing our sexuality more because men are not that picky and we are more picky and we're supposed to be more picky. And it doesn't make you a good woman to put up with men ignoring you, neglecting you, not caring how you feel, or giving, taking their cocks in your bare prissy. It just makes you too easy. And high quality men don't respect easy women. They love a woman with standards and boundaries. It's very attractive for a man to have standards and boundaries too. So find your own line in the sand. I shared mine. Yours can be completely different. Just find yours and stick with them. That's my tip. And um, I really love my little. I just put this on today. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so cute. Would love to hear your thoughts on this. By the way, the book, The Sexual Revol The Case Against the Sexual Revolution, just arrived at my doorstep today, and I can't wait to dig into it. And I'll be making some videos about that very soon.